Hello, welcome to another episode of North Point Plus. This is episode four, mm. which is the Rocky Four of the episodes. Oh, what would that make me? What villain am I? I think that's the Russian. The Russian? <laughs> of Dr- Drago or Drago? Was oh, that his name? I haven't watched it in 20 years. <laughs> Nobody said it's going to be that. You. It's going to be that kind of episode. Yes. So by the end of it, if I'm not in tears and bloody and bruised, the goal. then we're all disappointed. That is the goal. <laughs> Spiritually speaking, of Spirit- course. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> this is our follow-up podcast uh, for each message. So we have messages on Sunday, and this podcast just gives us an opportunity to answer your questions, to dive a little deeper. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Mark Adkins, and to my left, ladies and gentlemen, making his debut appearance, Oh, Jake Howard. Oh, man. <laughs> the pressure's on. Hey, who's the other host? If you're one of the hosts, who's the other host? We're all hosts in our own way. <laughs> oh, that's like the like a podcasting Bible answer. We're all our It's a hosts. podcasting participation trophy. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone gets their own trophy. Everyone gets to be a host. Jake, we kicked off a new series yeah. this week called Post-Its. Yep. Sticky papers. Can't say post-its. <laughs> I think that's copy. Don't sue us. Who makes post-its? Do we know who makes post-its? I don't know. Procter and Gamble. They okay. make everything. Yeah. Can you bleep that out? Can it be like when you called beep beep? <laughs> Just kidding. We're calling it sticky notes, not beep beep. Like bleep that out. We're gonna so get people know. writing in if we start beeping stuff. <laughs> that's, true. <laughs> that's true. That's a lot of editing. To have to what's yeah, the, what's the new series? What's that all about? Yeah, sticky notes. So we are taking uh, four of the letters, the smallest letters in the New Testament. Uh, and just diving in. A lot of times, like, uh, Romans gets a lot of love. It does. The Gospels get a lot of love for some reason. Like, right? <laughs> Whatever. Jesus' story four times. It's old news. Right, right? Some Come people on. call it good news. But I call it old news. who's talking about Philemon over here? Or a few of the Johns? We got two Johns to go? Two, yeah. Two... Two John and three John. <laughs> two John, two John, three John. We're not doing first John. He was too long. He didn't no, make the cut. He didn't make. He couldn't cut. fit on a sticky note. We needed two. Sticky he got notes greedy. He got two. <laughs> yeah, and then Jude, Jude, right? No one talks about Jude. Nobody talks about. You just go right to Revelation. We're saving right? Jude to the end. It's too exciting. Nobody <laughs> wants to watch episode nine. Everybody wants to go to the season finale. That's how that works. Jude's season or Jude's episode nine. Take me to the finale. It's the filler episode. Come no one cares on. about Jude. Man. So each week we're picking a letter. We're diving in. Yeah. You had. Philemon. 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 <laughs> However it's pronounced, right? Yeah, we don't we don't really know. Yep. Just making it up as we go. Just kidding. We don't. We study hard. We do. We study really We're very hard. Serious. Well, it leads <laughs> to the uh the first question that was submitted it wasn't really a question and it's anonymous, so it very well could have been your wife, <laughs> your mom. <laughs> yeah, I think it was my mom. Someone <laughs> someone submitted a comment and said, I loved the format for today's service, finding the message in the scripture is my favorite way to study. Thank you. You're welcome. Mom, <laughs> Ashley. No, it wasn't Ashley. My wife didn't write that. She. We talked differently on those kinds of things. <laughs> that could have been mom. So mom, if you're watching this, thank you. I love you. Thanks, Jake's if mom. If you weren't my mom, thank you. I love you anyway. That was, that was very kind. I'm glad. That was fun. Yes, it's a great comment, and I think it speaks to... Has I Rick mean, gotten those comments yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. It. Come Count on. It. That, that counts. That's for something. <laughs> That's for something. Rick's right going to start writing in his own comments. He's gonna, exactly. <laughs> He's going to start fluffing himself from now Every on. week I get 20 comments. Maybe I did this. I could have done this, right? I'm hey. not smart enough. I should have thought of that ahead of time. We'd have had four comments. <laughs> Good looking speaker. Um, all, all, uh, all kidding aside, because oh, there's yeah. a lot at stake here. That's right. <laughs> um, all kidding aside, uh, I think it does speak to, I mean, it just speaks to just how we just do messages at North Point. Yeah. Every Sunday. Yeah. I mean, well, it's a huge... Uh, principle. It's a it's a big rock in us to go to scripture for everything, right? Yeah. Like what what we think, what we believe. Like we're not going to go to a, some denominational statement. We're not going to go to uh, what some famous person in ministry right. be it like uh, today or thousands of years ago. Like we may know that stuff and find right. some of it interesting. But man, if we're going to figure out like what's important, we're just going to go to scripture, right? Yep. So we're going to try and dive into that. I think that's important as a team and as a church and elders. Like that's that's kind of what we do. Yeah, it's a huge, and I think if you if you're coming on a Sunday and you hear a message and we're not basing it on scripture, mm-hmm. that's something that you should write in and ask Absolutely. a question about. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's a concern. Right so. in there. We want to know. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you talked about Philemon. I did. And Philemon has the uh, the the lighthearted topic of slavery. Yeah, right. Way to kick it <laughs> off there, Rick. Come yes. on, man. Lighthearted message, sticky notes, Jeez. bright and colorful. Yeah. Kicking it off with slavery. Slavery. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so the inevitable question. Who picked these out after all? <laughs> Come on. 
was going to say Rick, but really it's the Holy Spirit. That's, <laughs> so do you really want to blame him? <laughs> do you want to blame him? I can't argue that. <laughs> want to go there? Not, oh, geez, that's cheating. That's so the inevitable question, whenever Philemon comes up, yeah. why didn't Paul just say slavery is bad? Yeah, right? Uh, it would be so easy to do that in yeah. a lot of ways. Like if we could just say, oh, black and white right there. There it is. It is. That's what you need to know. Uh, he doesn't do that. He addresses slavery. Yep. Like it's a cultural thing that's going on. Uh, but I think the reason he doesn't just come out and say, like, hey, you need to take Onesimus, this runaway thieving slave, back uh, because slavery is wrong, mm. uh, is he's not, his goal is not to knock down slavery. Like mm-hmm. That's not why he's writing this. That's not what's there. Uh, his goal is much deeper than that. His goal is to, I think, get to the unity as believers, like right. there's there's this connection that we all have that uh, when you know and love Jesus as Lord and Savior, and I know and love Jesus as Lord and Savior, like we're part of the family of God. Right. So I think Paul's trying to get to that, recognizing that when we have Jesus in us and we're pursuing after Jesus, like it's going to change our heart. Yeah. It's going to change our heart. It, it's not just going to be doing certain things to look good, or right? To, to make achievements to get closer to God, because you can't. Right, like that's just yep. not not gonna happen. That's not, that's not how it works. The Bible says it's not how it works. You can't do enough. You'll always be bad. Sorry, you'll always be bad. Welcome to North Point Plus. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I think what he's trying to get to is just basically to say, it's got to be a change of heart. And so yeah. we're gonna talk about the heart issue there. And as a result, once the heart changes, then everything's about you. It's yeah. gonna change. Like how you treat your spouse is gonna change. How, how you treat your kids is gonna change. Your right. finances, your work, and eventually, yeah, you're gonna get to big issues like slavery and recognize, man, this isn't. Right. This isn't right. what I want. Like, I would love to know, like, what happened with the rest of Philemon mm. after this. Like, we don't have that. Right. It'd be so good to know those kinds of things. But man, I got to think this dramatically changed the church here um, and Colossae for for Philemon and for uh, Onesimus and for everybody that's reading that because it's making them step back and realize, man, people are different, especially when we're in the family of God. Yeah. We treat each other differently <clears throat> right. than the rest of the world. Yeah. Well, I think it, it speaks to a little, uh, it should be convicting for our culture because especially nowadays, if you don't vocalize very specifically Mm -hmm. what you're against Mm -hmm. and condemn a specific list of actions, circumstances, scenarios, whatever it might be, that in and of itself, that silence of not condemning Mm -hmm. is looked at as like the unforgivable sin in the world today. So if you're not vocal enough, if you're not specifically saying these words, and so I think a lot of people look at Philemon and just say, like, Paul, like you were this close. Why didn't you just Mm -hmm. say what I wanted you to say? (laughs) And really, I think what you addressed is God goes deeper than just the specific action Mm -hmm. or the specific circumstance and goes directly to the heart of Philemon, addresses the heart of Onesimus, addresses the heart of the church in that area. And if that's how God deals with slavery, I think that has a track record of working. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. You know, I look right now, um, I love watching sports all the time and basically any sport. Um, I think I've done curling and bowling when I get really bored and watch (laughs) those too. But like, it's really big right now. If you're a big professional sport in in the NBA, NFL, even college sports, um, on, on, on floors, on fields, on jerseys, on helmets, like you see statements right now, like end end racism, right? you know, or everyone matters or like whatever it may be, like all of these statements that are out there. Right. Um, And that's great. Like awareness is really, really good. Right. Um, But man, it's so useless if that's it. Right. Right. And and I think that's part of what Paul's trying to get here is he's trying to get to the part of like, man, I don't want to just make a comment. I want to get to the root of the issue. Right. I don't don't want behavior modification. Right. I want to change heart through Jesus. Yeah. Because that's what's going to make a difference that's what's going to last. Like we can try and do behavior modification from uh, a certain law or uh, public pressure or, or whatever it may be. Right. And that's just temporary. Yeah. So often temporary, but if we want real change, man, it starts with heart change. And and if you want that, honestly, heart change comes from Jesus. Yeah. Like you're just not going to get it anywhere else because we are selfish sinners, (laughs) black hearted sinners, as I've heard people call it before. Right. And, And we are not good left to our own devices. But when Jesus is our core, well, man, then th- there's an eternal change yeah. that comes. It's inside out as opposed to trying to fix the outside. Yep. Eventually, we'll learn the lesson that Jesus' way is better than our way. But eventually. <laughs> eventually. That, that might take some time. <laughs> um, this is a submitted question uh, by... 
What, who submitted this one, Mike? Bayman Royer. <laughs> Which, if you can, if you can play some shuffling with some letters, I know a Ray Boyer. He's no, a, this is uh, this is Bay Royer. Oh man, I got to meet him. Totally different. Uh, Bay, if you'll stop by, I'd love to see you sometime and, <laughs> and hang out. I feel like Ray's going to show up with a mustache now on Sunday. Yep, like he's going to have the Ridley mustache. This is a challenge, Ray. When you watch this, it's a challenge, man. <laughs> I want to see it. Dastardly. So the question from Bay from yeah. Bayman. How do we, in a winsome manner, reconcile and reach out to the world without betraying our convictions and beliefs, especially uh, in a world that is so willing to cancel those who speak out against it? So I guess to to summarize Ray's Ray's question, uh, you know, in the Gospels, we are called to spread the gospel, right. <laughs> to go out into all the world, baptize the nations, um, and doing that for Christians has led to torture and yeah. abuse and imprisonment and martyrdom and being killed in, in horrific ways. And even in, in America, you know, and we're not <laughs> to think that we're being per- persecuted, and I'm not saying that's what, that's yeah, what right. Baymond is saying. <laughs> um, but that gets thrown around a lot. Uh, that the American church is persecuted for our beliefs, for what we speak, for what we speak out against, um, and the gospel inherently goes against culture. Um, it's it, by its very nature, it's counter culture. It's right. counter this world. Right. So, how as Christians do we reach out in a loving, gospel-centered way, without sacrificing our beliefs, without you know, ceding some of our beliefs to culture so that they might hear us out? Mm-hmm. Um, I, that's a question worth wrestling with. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so for sure. You know, and, and you're you're right. Like cancel culture is a thing right now. Yeah, um, and everybody is afraid of that. Yep. Like everybody, multi billion dollar corporations are afraid of saying the wrong thing and being right. labeled in a way. Um, high school students are petrified <laughs> of saying the wrong thing right. and being labeled uh, the wrong way. And, and it's like you're trying to hit a moving target all the time. Yep. To figure that out because you can't do it right you can't do it and the hard part about some of that um is there's no grace in it yep number one and i think that is that's tough yep that's tough for anybody like man i I need tons of grace like people are going to watch this podcast and they're going to be like jake said something ridiculous i'm going to do it i'm going to i'm going to take the clips (laughs) take the clips pull them out of context (laughs) next staff meetings is going to be mark showing all these (laughs) things up there jake's mom you think his message was good wait wait till you hear this (laughs) yeah right Uh, and so like there's no grace yeah it's really hard like nobody is defined by their worst moment Mm. and nobody's defined by their best moment yep like we all do things that we get credit way too much credit for uh, that we're really not that good it's just some perception that somebody thought we were or we do dumb things that maybe our intentions were good Mm. but we weren't didn't word it well or we did things just a little off and it came across wrong now there are people that do bad things for bad reasons and that's a real thing and that doesn't mean there shouldn't be consequences but man, there's got to be room for grace in our world as well, and and it's hard living in that fear of a graceless right. world right. right now from our culture, and and so I think knowing that we are are called to to share Jesus with the world, right? Like that was right. the the last command he gave before his ascension was like, hey, go on out, you know, let everybody know Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, like go out and spread my gospel, and so it's something we are called to to do, right? Um, and we get to do. Like it's an incredible thing. Like when we have this incredible gift, why wouldn't we want to give that yeah. as well? Right. And so I think in order to do so in today's world, though, I think realistically in my mind, there's like three things to grab a hold of. So if you want to write these, get ready to write these down. Mark, like, okay, got it. Okay, cool. Got it. Uh, number one um, is to love, to mm. love. Like I think love is truly the core on part of this. And, and what I mean by that is that's got to be your motivator. Yeah. Uh, it's not necessarily about being right. Um, yeah. Or, or having everything right in the world, like this is how it's supposed to be, so right. it's going to be this kind of way. Um, not that that's not important, it, it is, like those are things that, that are important, but love has to be the motivator. Mm. I think we get that example from Jesus himself. Like the right. reason that God sent his son was love. Right. Was love, it was to bring <clears throat> back into to relationship. Yeah. Um, and that he made things right his way by taking our burden on himself. Yeah. Like that's a that's a beautiful thing. There is justice and love in that. And so I think right. love has to be the key, man. If, if love's not your motivator, like things are not going to end well when you're trying to spread no. the gospel. It's just not going to happen. No. Well, it, it, I think it's it's for me that has always been a good gut check of my motivation because mm-hmm. um, it's so often 
in a culture, and I'm speaking for myself because I know not everyone's motivated this way, in a culture that loves to shout and argue and to fight for whatever might be <laughs> that right. day's hot topic, um, to have a, a love that is motivated by really the best thing for that person. And again, for me, the gut check has been, is my heart breaking for this person? Mm-hmm. Um, or am I just doing this to shout my point, right. to get the sounds, to get the sound bite in, whatever it might be. Is it about loving um, them or is it about your ego? In some right. Ways? So to really have that gut check moment of like, no, like my heart really does break. Like it breaks for this person. It breaks for this world, this situation, this group of people, whatever it might be. Um, and having that be, <clears throat> if, if I can get that, frame of mind that tends to be a good indicator of mm-hmm. okay I'm, I'm probably heading into this with the with a loving motivation yeah. rather than i want to look good yeah i want to say my point i'm just listening to respond rather than listening right. to right. actually interact with a person right so right. absolutely yeah so i think it all starts with love like, yep. i think that has to be uh the first thing i think another thing that's important to keep in mind um as you're trying to share the gospel in today's world wisdom like mm. like no who you're talking to, mm. like what's going on in their life, number yeah. one, um, so that you can interact with with wisdom in all things. Uh, one of my favorite verses in the Bible um, says to be uh, as cunning as snakes and gentle as doves. <laughs> and I hate snakes, but I love that verse. That's why your nickname is right? Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> More like Jake petrified of the snake. That's how, how it goes, man. I um, Yeah, I got stories, man. Um, don't do snakes. So, like, th- there's something to that idea of yeah. man, be be wise, be cunning in how you're doing right. things. And it's not to be manipulative. No. It's just to read the room and be aware. Right. You know, it's like bringing up politics at Thanksgiving. Read the room, man. We're all trying to have a good dinner here and <laughs> right. not talk about this kind of stuff and make everybody angry or right. like those kinds of things. So I, I think there has to be wisdom in recognizing, like, is this the right time to talk about this? Mm. Um, both like actual setting that you're in, but also right. like what's going on in that person's life. Are they in a place of pain that they can't even hear that right now? And mm. they just need to hear like, man, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm here for you. I yeah. Know things are rough. Um, and I don't need to tell you why things are so rough in your life because you've messed it up because you're yeah. a sinner. Uh, right. No, they just need to hear, man, you're loved right. for a while. Like you have to have that relationship to be yeah. a part of it. Um, and then I also think you have to use wisdom in the medium too. Mm. Right. Like, man, there are so many keyboard warriors out there to yes. prove a point <laughs> on every issue. Like you can yep. go from sports to politics to uh, like what color was the dress? Do you remember that? Like a couple <laughs> years ago on that? Yes. And it was blue and everybody else is obviously wrong. Oh my right? gosh. I can't. Are you being serious? <laughs> we have to pause. It's blue. <laughs> no, I, I can't. It's blue. <laughs> it's white. It's blue. I I oh my goodness, Mark. See, so here's That's the, not even a planned thing. Yeah, <laughs> That's, yeah it's okay. not. So here, We're going to have to unpause because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not coming at this in a loving way. Yeah, Mark's <laughs> going to have to like walk away and take <laughs> drink water and come back. The blood and pressure and just spiked. That blue. Um, so but like recognizing that how to have these conversations. Yeah. And not that there's not a good dialogue to have right. online. You can. But you also got to recognize like you can't tell tone online right that's like it's really hard to read tone right yep yeah and and you have to really think the best of people right um especially online when they're writing stuff and all that so and and realistically it's probably also not the most effective right right like relationship is going to be key so you got to be able to to start with love you got to have wisdom yep and how you're going to approach people and how you're going to talk about things right um and then i think also part of it is um to just not be shocked Mm. By any means, like a lot of Philemon, what they're discussing in here is a family matter. Hmm. So it is, hey, Philemon, you need to accept um, Onesimus here, even though he's wronged you, because you guys are family. Yeah. Because you both have have Jesus as Lord and Savior. You've been adopted into the family of God. This is your brother in Christ now. So you have to make this reconciliation. You have to make this right. You have to be together in this. Uh, Most of the world does not have that with us. So like when we are... Uh, championing Jesus in the world, man, you got to recognize that's going to cause issues for people. Yeah. Because it makes, forces people to recognize things that like, hey, Mm. um, I don't want to deal with that. (laughs) If what you're saying is true, then I'm wrong. I'm bad. I have some issues and I don't want that. I like where I'm at. I like what I'm doing. Uh, John chapter 15, I was reading this today, 18 through 25, man. it, It says exactly that idea that, hey, like they hated Jesus 
Mm. And Jesus is perfect, right? Like perfect yeah. in everything. Perfect when he's mad, perfect when he's joking, perfect when right. whatever emotions or whatever he's doing, like he was perfect in it and he was still hated. Right. So like it's going to happen. If you're an ambassador for Jesus, you will be criticized. Yeah. Well, it reminds me, there's a, I can't remember who said it. Someone in my life um, used to say, lost people act lost. Mm. So yeah. when we're out in the world, when we're sharing it, whether that be with friends, family, strangers, yeah. people on the airplane, whoever it might be, if you're on an airplane, who knows with COVID now. You can't talk about <laughs> right now. Ever fly now. Yeah. Right. Um, but lost people act lost. Yeah. So when, you, like you said, when you come at the world with Christ and say like, hey, you are desperately broken mm -hmm. and in need of a savior. How dare you, Mark? It makes sense How that lost that, people bro. hear that. I'm fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that shouldn't shock us. No, um, it shouldn't. And so I think I think part of that comes back to uh, doubles back to your wisdom, the point of having wisdom. In that, I, I feel like there's a lot of times, and again, I'm speaking for myself. There's a lot of times in my life where situations and conversations arise, and you're really able to. It seems like you're almost able to dive a little deeper into that mm -hmm. issue or topic or the hurt or the pain that someone has. Yeah. Um, and something about it just doesn't feel like it's just the time to go in. And I think we have this thought like, oh, if I don't go to that place mm -hmm. where I share the full truth, yeah. then I'm not loving that person. Right. Or I'm not, I'm ashamed of the gospel right. if I don't do that. Right. And that I think is, honestly, I think that's a tactic by the enemy mm -hmm. that Satan uses to say like, hey, you're not really a Christian if you don't verbally abuse people with the gospel. <laughs> right. Um, and again, it's not to say like... At North Point, we are not ashamed of the gospel no, to say that we are sinners, desperately broken, right. in need of a savior, yes. and Jesus is that one and only savior. Yes. 100%. But like you said, sometimes people are in a place where you can say those exact words, it just bounces off. Right. They're not in a place where they can hear it. So to have the wisdom and discernment to be in relationship with people, to love people through wisdom, um, and again, to not be shocked that lost people act lost, Right. And you're still called to love them and share the gospel, however that looks right. in their life. Yeah, it's you know, tough. When I was younger, I do remember, like, feeling that burden yeah. of, like, I have to, like, really get this across. Mm. Otherwise, if I don't, like, man, hell is in their future. Mm. It is on me to, like, make sure I present this well, yep. factual, I'm convincing. Like, yep. I need all of those things. And what I recognized is, hey, Jake... You are not the Holy Spirit, man. <laughs> you yeah. need to step back here a little bit. That doesn't yeah. mean that I don't play a role yep. or play a part. Yep. But man, I have zero influence in the salvation of anybody. Yeah. It's the Spirit of God. It's Jesus. It's God the Father working in the lives of other people. And, yep. and at times he gets to he chooses to use me to be that vessel. Yep. And to be able to communicate his truth. And most of the time, I mean, I'm just trying to get out of the way for the spirit because yeah. I'm going to say or stumble over myself or yep. I'm going to say something wrong or we're going to wind up talking about snakes on the <laughs> podcast <laughs> and, and it's going to turn somebody off. And that's fine. But like, man, the spirit can move in spite of me, yeah. in spite of me. And I am so thankful. For yeah. That. I had a very yeah. similar uh, journey in that where I remember I was having a back and forth with someone. It was like a multiple days long conversation. Some of it was text, some of it was in person, some of it was like, it was just this long thing. And I remember thinking, oh, like I forgot to mention this verse. And if I had just done this Bible verse, they would have got it. Yeah. And I felt God speak to me and he said like, do you think you're a better teacher than me? Right. And I was right. like, I do, apparently. <laughs> apparently I do think I'm a better teacher. Yeah. So yeah, to be able to have the humility to step back and say like, you know, God calls us to be faithful, to share his word, and we can do that in ways that are discerning and wise. And at the end of the day, the pressure is not on Jake to save someone's soul. The pressure is not on Mark to save someone's soul. Thank God, because yeah. you're not getting saved if it's on me. <laughs> right. When it's freeing too, man. Yeah. Like when I recognized that, oh man, it was so freeing too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so freeing. Oh, to it's know, a huge like, burden. And the lifted. church is going to go on. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it is. It's been. It's going to keep on rolling. Yep. God is bigger and more powerful. Yep. And to know, like we talked about some on Sunday. He uses the good and mm. the bad to make the right. So yep. whether I'm good or bad in my <laughs> yeah. presenting of the gospel, he can still use. Yes. One of my one of my favorite phrases that uh, someone said was, God draws straight lines with crooked sticks. Yeah. And I was like, yes. thank God that God can draw a straight line out of my stupid crooked stick <laughs> <Absolutely>. life. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank God. Absolutely, man. Oh.
All right. Great question, Baymond. Thanks, Baymond. <laughs> Good food for thought. <laughs> Um, these next two questions uh, were submitted anonymously, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read them together. Um, I mean, it's just heartbreaking um, to just to be reminded. It's heartbreaking, but it's necessary to be reminded that you know we can talk about theology and apply all of that and, and kind of live in that head knowledge. But man, this is really where, like this is where the rubber meets the road of of God's word really speaking into our lives. So the first question. Uh, was how do we live in reconciliation with someone who has hurt us? So you mentioned in Philemon, yep. Onis- Onesimus ran away, uh, possibly stole from Philemon, wronged him, and there Paul calls them to live in reconciliation. Um, so this person asks, beyond stealing, um, what if someone is an abuser? Someone hurts us, physically abuses us, whatever that might be. Uh, and then the second question that kind of goes hand in hand with this is, um, <clears throat> again, submitted anonymously. This person says, I tried to love on my sister and see her beyond her anger. Uh, it resulted in hate mail, <clears throat> excuse me, in honoring her wishes to not visit her for any reason. Sadly, she died alone and angry, and it breaks my heart. How do we find peace in sadness? I prayed for her reconciliation, uh, but never saw it. Never saw the reconciliation I hoped for. So, again, this this is real life. Yeah. This is yeah, where, sure. unfortunately, even in the church, yeah. we're a church of messed up, right. sinful, broken people, and we will hurt one another in very small ways and in really yeah. devastating ways. Yeah. So how, in light of that, do we live as reconciled to one another? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, first off, like, man, if this was you in your situation where you've gone through some some abuse or you've had a broken relationship that, man, you, you were trying to bring it back together and it never did and it just left some emptiness. Like, man, first of all, I just want to say I'm sorry. Like, that that mm. hurts. That's painful. And that's hard. Um, and just know, like, man, man, you are loved by God and, mm. and you're not punished on these kinds of things, but God is moving. He is working. He is doing incredible things. And so mm. I, I would encourage, like, like, man, just keep seeking him on some of this stuff. And I know that sounds really like churchy sure. okay, to be able to say, but man, there's so much truth in that as well. Um, so I, I think part of it is um, you also have to recognize you can only do what you can do, mm. right? Like there there are certain limits. Every, every relationship takes two person, two persons, two people, pe- person, two people, peoples, people, two people, <laughs> people I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> English is kind of my first language. So um, it, it takes two people in a relationship. Yeah. So, if you are are trying everything that you can be able to do to bring reconciliation, whether it's a harm mm. that you've done or somebody's harm to you, like like you can only do what you can do yeah. at this point in time. You're accountable for your actions um, and not necessarily the actions of somebody else. Like Onesimus could have gone to Philemon with this letter mm. and, and he could have said like, hey, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm a changed person. Like I'm not the guy that I was before, but I recognize I got to make amends for the things that I did wrong because right. I want to be family together. You are my brother in Christ now. Like we are bonded in this. Right. We should be different than the rest of the world. And Philemon could have rejected him. Yeah. He could have just said, sorry, dude, no, it it hurt too much. I don't want anything to do with that. Uh, That wouldn't be on Onesimus. Right. Right. Because he's doing what he's called to do, you know, and I think uh, one of the th- important things to recognize, and we talked a little bit about this already, is this idea of like being part of the family and not part of the family in yeah. relationships. So like if we've got an issue and we've got something going on, man, I, I should feel compelled by the spirit and maybe even the advice of others to say, man, you got to fix what's going on with you and Mark. You can't yep. let this uh, blue and white dress thing really get in between <laughs> you two. We all know Mark's wrong, but you got to fix this out. You got to love him, love him to the right way. Love him anyway, man. <laughs> uh, and so you got to figure that out. And so I, I could come to you and I could try to figure that out. Um, and if you're like yep. still not having it on that, man, I'm, I'm going to try and get other people in the church involved in that to be able to like stand beside. And, and yeah. if it's a, if it's, there's a real issue that's here, and I'm not talking like every minor issue that comes up, but like right. if there's a real rift or a real thing that's going on, um, man, getting other people to be able to connect in that, give wise counsel to you, yep. uh, you and I in this yep. issue, and then figure it out. And if there's still rejection on that, man, I think it's okay to be able to walk away at some point in time and hmm. just say like, man, I've done what I can do. And if if that person comes back down the road, yeah, I'm here. Yep. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna treat them poorly. Yep. I'm still available. I still love them. I still want what's best for them. I'm still gonna care for them on the, every opportunity I get. Um, but I'm I'm gonna heed their wishes of, of the rejection that they have there, 
and just sit back and be ready. It's almost like prodigal sonish, right? Like you're just waiting on the return. Yeah. And sometimes that return happens, and like God is glorified in that. Yep. Um, and unfortunately, the world is broken, and that doesn't always occur. And yep. so you have to be able to, to take some peace in recognizing, man, I, I gave what I could give hmm. to this. I, I put everything I could into this relationship, and they still rejected it. Yep. I can move on. You know, I think there's even... Uh, it kind of, you could almost apply. Uh, Jesus talks about like, like, or Paul talked to, about wiping the dust off your sandals. Yeah. Uh, at some point in time, like, yeah, hey, you go, you give the gospel. They reject the gospel. You've tried. You've done everything you can in good faith, and it's still rejected. At some point in time, you, right. you wipe the dust off your sandals and you move on to the next town. Right. And you you proclaim there. So you can't get hung up on that broken relationship. Like there are yeah. great relationships still out there right. for you to invest in and be a part in. Um, I do want to speak specifically to the to the idea of abuse sure. in here, um, because I think that's important. Um, yeah. And I think recognizing that, unfortunately, abuse is a part of our world, whether it's uh, mental, whether it's physical, whether it's sexual, whatever nature it, it may be, right. um, it is okay to protect yourself. If you are being abused, yes. uh, and if it's your spouse or it's even like you can separate, you don't have to put yourself in places of harm. Like, I think that is important to recognize. Uh, and I think we can even go in Scripture and make arguments to be able to say, like, hey, um, if this abuse is occurring and it's and it's between Christians even, like, man, you're going to get the church involved. You're going to get there, and hopefully yeah. there's repentance and reconciliation, and they're one back to Christ, yeah. uh, and, and there's help to grow over a long period of time, yeah. right? And, and there's good checks and balances. There's people in your corner that are there, and you're yep. pouring into both people's lives. It's not a false repentance kind of thing. Like you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, but that might not always be the case too. Right. Like there may be abuse and it's, it's, there is, uh, I think a scriptural argument to be able to step away and, and protect yourself from that kind of abuse that's happening because they are not yeah. treating you like a believer. They would be treating you like an unbeliever. And I think if abuse from an unbeliever is a, is a whole nother thing that can come in there. Yeah. Um, so it's not saying you have to, put yourself out there to just continually get beat down. Right. There is, I think, scripture yeah. about being able to be healthy, to dust off your sandals, yeah. not be in that abuse and that kind of thing too. Yeah, well, I think I think we often find ourselves, in, it, it's similar to you know that, that guilt trip that we give ourselves with sharing the gospel. Yeah. It's like, well, if, if I don't say this thing, I'm not sharing the full gospel, and we guilt ourselves into that. And I think the same is true, unfortunately, with victims of abuse. Yeah. It's to say, like, this is... God has called me to love my spouse mm -hmm. through their abuse, through whatever the situation might be. God has called me to love them through that. And some of that could be true. Sure. Um, while at the same time, like you said, there is plenty of scriptural evidence and arguments to be made for God's love and protection over abuse victims right. and getting people out of that situation. Right. You're just as valuable as they are. Right, right. Eyes. So yes, 100% to that. Um, w with the topic of, uh, of reconciliation, I, I think too, y you hit on it, and I think it's just worth emphasizing to double emphasize um, that reconciliation, true reconciliation is only ever found in Jesus. Right. So even if, you know, Jake and I have our rift about the dress or whatever, whatever the latest meme might be that, that Jake thinks is funny and I can't stand. Um, <clears throat> if Jake and I are not Christians, Jake and I can find some element of agreement. Sure. This happens in politics. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> we can find some compromise, some element of agreement, mm -hmm. and that will always, always, always fail at yes. some point. Yep unless it's rooted in Jesus and the work that he did on the cross right. um, and through his life, his death, his resurrection. And I think that for me is the reminder of, you know, if we're experiencing hurt, people are sinning against us mm -hmm. um, and it runs the gamut of what that might look like. Um, I am called to take all of that to the cross. Mm -hmm. And even if the person that hurt me doesn't take what they did to the cross, right. I can still take my hurt, right. my pain, my sorrow, and I can leave that at the cross with Christ and find reconciliation with God, yep. and that's the most important thing. And I can forgive that person and pray for reconciliation, and if it comes about, wonderful. Mm -hmm. We'll praise God for that. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, that's a symptom of a broken world, and we can praise God that he's saving that. So 
Great, great question. Um, great question. So thank you for submitting that. Um, this last question um, that, I'll, that I'll touch on, uh, again, is, is kind of the inevitable question that comes up. So we're talking about Philemon. We're talking about reconciliation. And if you look over the last year just in the United States, there's so many things that need reconciling. Right. <laughs> there's racial reconciliation. There's all this stuff with COVID. Should you wear a mask? Should you not wear a mask? Should you wear a, get a vaccine? Should you not get a vaccine? Right. And every uh, everything under the sun we argue about and and some reconciliation is needed and so in your message you talked about the way to really find change is through jesus it's not through laws it's not through social reform it's not through politics it's not through government if you want to change a person that starts at the heart so the logical question i guess would be then why do we vote? Why do we do anything in politics? Why get involved in government? Should we even care about any of this? Right. <laughs> just give up. Just be done. Right? Exactly. It's easier that way. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, and I think uh, it's not to say like don't vote. Like right. Go vote if you please vote. vote right. Like, Voting is good. Right. Yeah. Like that. That brings change. So like like vote. Be active. Like speak out. Do those kinds of things that are that need to be done. It's not bad to be able to do those. But just recognize that like, man. God is going to move no matter what. Hmm. So a lot of times, like we see this every four years in the election. Yep. Like no matter Christian, not Christian, whatever it is, like people pick sides yep. of an issue or a, a, po- a political party or candidate, and they are convinced in their prayer life or, or whatever it is, like this is this is who God wants to be president or, or senator or yep. this is the walls that he wants and this or that. And so they're all sold out for those kinds of things. And, and the reality is, man, I would encourage any time when it comes to voting or anything in politics or, or social issues or whatever it is, like be prayerful. Yep. In fact, in anything ever, be prayerful, <laughs> right? Yeah. That would be super helpful. Yep. Um, and vote as God, get involved as God puts on your heart to be able to do those kinds of things. Um, but when your stuff fails, when your candidate doesn't win, mm. that policy that you don't like is still passed into law or whatever it may be, Yep, you don't have to panic. Mm. Like There's no reason to hit the panic button on those kinds of things. Yeah, um, But there is to recognize that, man, it's not about, once again, uh, fixing the symptoms. It's about curing the disease. Yep. And, and the reality, it's all rooted in sin. And only Jesus can cure that. And so it's, it's coming back to him in that and recognizing that, man, he can work in the good. Yep how we view good, yep. right? And he can work in the bad, how we view bad, yep. to make what is right. And we yeah. have countless examples in, in the Bible and in history alone where God has taken uh, a good king in the Old Testament, like a good king, and then there's been great reform and, and the people have gone after him, or there's been a bad king, and yet God has still worked to bring about justice or to mm. do incredible things through that. And so it's just recognizing that, man, when it comes to politics, when it comes to uh, social reform or medical reform or whatever it may be, right. whatever the issue is, because when one is done, another one's coming right behind it. Like that, that just always yeah. happened. It's it's an unending hamster wheel that we're running on right now. Yeah. So like just <laughs> recognize it's not about the issue yeah. that's on there. Those are all symptoms of a disease and you want the change, you gotta get back to Jesus and you gotta be able to to rest on knowing he is working in the good right. or the bad to simply make what is right. And yeah. he knows what's right. Yeah. He knows what's right. Yep. I don't know. He knows what's right. No candidate knows. No no other pastor out there can tell you he knows exactly what God's will is completely in the time. Some think they do. Work out. Some <laughs> think they do. They're wrong. <laughs> Once again, the dress is blue. So <laughs> there you go. But God can work in the yeah. good and the bad to make what is right. And when you recognize that... yeah. Once again, man, it's free. Yeah, it's huge. I don't have to hit the panic button because yeah. God is still king. Yep. And that's what yeah. matters. Well, I think it's 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 important to remember, and I think you mentioned this in your message, that <clears throat> Paul writes this in prison. Yeah. And I Paul writes a lot of letters from prison. Yeah. You have a lot of time to write yeah. when you got you nothing got else to do. Going on. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always, I, I love pointing it out because um, someone pointed it out to me and it was like this huge light bulb that in all of Paul's letters that he writes from prison, mm-hmm. He never, ever asks for government change to get him out of prison. Yeah. He never asks yeah. for protests, you know, petitions, voting, mm-hmm. change out the governor, march on Rome, whatever it might right. be. Right. Paul always goes with the gospel right. and uses his imprisonment as a way to bring about more gospel change. That's and I think that, especially for us, um, in a world where, like you said, it's there's 
every day it's like a, it's like a hydra. You cut off one issue and two more pop up. Um, to remember that that's that's not hopeless. It's easy to look at all the situations we have, whether it be you know, again, there's too many issues to even pick from. Right. That even if you get one, it's like, gosh, how do we solve all of these issues? And remember that our hope isn't found in solving the issue. Your hope is found in Christ. Right. That's it. Right. You know, talking about your prison example there with Paul, uh, there is in the Bible where people were praying for Peter to get out of yeah. prison, and God does it, and he goes to the people that were praying for him, and they didn't even believe it. Yeah. They were, like, stunned <laughs> that this yeah. happened, and it was like, but you got what you were asking for <laughs> in this moment. Like, this would be good if God would do that, and we believe it's the right thing, and then he does, and you're like, oh, I don't even know what to do with this. <laughs> and, and I think that would still happen today for yeah. a lot of things that we would be like, I still don't know what to do with that now because right. we were asking for it, and we believed in it, but we were really more about the issue than the God behind the issue. Jeez. And I think that that'll preach lost so many times. Yeah. As cliche as it may sound, man, it all just comes back to Jesus. Yep, every time. It's that cheesy Sunday school answer. But it's always right. Yeah, right. I got through Bible college just doing that Jesus on all my <laughs> tests. They didn't accept it, but, you know. Yeah, it's, I was going to say, it says more about your college than, <laughs> <laughs> than, than anything else. <laughs> it is a good answer, though. It's a good answer, right? Does that apply? <laughs> cool. Well, that's, a, that's all the questions that I've got. Anything else on your end? Any oh, closing words of wisdom that you want to leave the people with? A lot of wisdom. Drop some truth bombs. You can't drop these mics because they're suspended in midair, but no, <laughs> you no, can try. Like the DJ mic, though. This <laughs> it's is, good. This is a you can get your DJ voice on. Yeah, I may just sneak in here later on and like <laughs> practice my late night DJ stuff. That's what North Point After Dark is. <laughs> late night. We had uh, what was it? We talked about another podcast doing uh, late night with Ricky Rubes. Ricky Rubes. I'm still waiting on that one. Ramblings I have with no Ricky idea Rubes. what the content is, but I am in. It's already got five stars for me. You're right there. Get oh, that'll fedora. be the day. Maybe that'll be our April Fool's joke. Yes. We'll Ramblings with Ricky Rubes. Ramblings with Ricky Rubes. <laughs> oh man, it's good stuff. Jake, thanks for your time. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. As always, thank you guys for submitting your questions and. Uh, We'll see you next week.